Hello there everyone on YouTube. This is my video review of the Thorn Nomad Mark II. I got this in 2014 for a world trip which I have now completed. I cycled around the world, 23 countries, 26,000 kilometres and this bike was fantastic. It's not without its problems but overall I absolutely loved it and so now I'm going to go over um, the bike in detail and tell you what was good and what was bad. Uh, you'll notice uh, that there's no front mud guard on the front wheel. That's because in transport on the airplane the front mud guard bent so I've disposed of that and I'll get a new one. And also when we get round to it the I haven't changed any of the rear brake pads. Well I've taken them out but I haven't replaced them with new ones. Um, but that's about it. I also had a black Brook saddle. This is my old one but I, I've put the Brook saddle on my other bike now. This has now just been cleaned and serviced. And so I'll start from the front and then go to the back. Okay so the front wheel obviously it's 26 inches. I had the Schwalbe Dream tyres. And now this tyre here, this is on the front, it didn't have as much weight but you can see there's still quite a lot of tread and this has got 10,000 miles or 16,000 kilometres on these tyres and they're still good, which is fantastic. I didn't have that much weight on the front, I still had two panniers, but it didn't wear down, so that's good. The rims I've got are the tungsten carbide ones that you can get, the CSS rims I think, uh, carbide supersonic I think it is. So it's a real tough material and there's no indentation at all. Even after all the braking I did, it's still as smooth as the day I got it, which is fantastic. You can see this somewhere, obviously, but it's um, it's still super smooth, which is great. The racks, the front racks, which are fantastic. These are uh, just obviously, everything's bolted on with Allen keys, which is great, and they're all pretty much the same size, so for the entire bike you only need about four different Allen keys. Um, and they bolt on here and down here and that's it and they just come off very easily if you want to maintain your bike was on the road they held pretty well actually or well, they held fantastically they never got loose or you know sometimes I was going down huge mountains and the whole bike would be rattling and after a couple of weeks I just go to tighten them up and they just need the tiniest adjustment obviously my panniers I had oddly panniers they started to rub and um, it did expose some bare metal underneath the black paintwork. I have repainted it. Thorn provides some paint for you to go over again, but I didn't the whole time, and there's only a little bit of surface rust really, so which can, which we sanded off and repainted. So that was great. Um, I didn't break a single spoke. The wheel has been true the entire trip. Um, they're just absolutely bomb-proof. These are the. It's upside down. These are the. Rigida Andra 30, which are known to be the strongest rims on the market, and they perform flawlessly. Um, I cleaned my entire bike and uh, oiled the chain once a week, religiously, for the 16 months I was away, and uh, I think this is uh, this is why my bike stayed so so good. This front hub here is the Schmidt Son 28 which provides electricity up this wire to the front light, the Schmidt Edelux. This is fantastic obviously when, uh, when I was going forward my light would, would be on. Up here there's where you can have it off um, on sensor mode or always on. So sensor mode, it was you can have on sensor mode and during the day it wouldn't do anything and then when it got dark it would detect that it was quite dark and it would turn on automatically. I always had it off most of the time, I didn't ride that much in the dark, but when I was going through tunnels and things like that, it was very bright and lit up the entire road and the entire tunnel basically, so this was great not to have to worry about having batteries or having my lights in my panniers and having to get out every time, it's always there, always ready. I also had it connected up to a USB, you can see right at the top here, this one's called Cycle 2 Change, it's a cheap one from Germany and it didn't work, you can see how rusty it is in there, rain got in and rusted it out. I, before originally I had the Toot Terrain, the Plug 3, 
which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of and that stopped working after two weeks. It's not Thorne's fault, I just got unlucky twice with a USB charger. I met lots of people who had them and they swore by them and they worked perfectly, but mine didn't. Um, something to take into account really, if you're thinking of running a computer or a sat nav which are very battery hungry, I would get one and just test it out. I never tested, or I test run mine for about a week before I went on tour. If you're going to get this bike, get it a few months before test out this USB um, a lot before you go out on tour because it broke on tour I couldn't really get it fixed on the road it was very frustrating so yeah that's one thing to look out for if you're going to get a USB on your headset make sure you test it thoroughly simple bell a lot of people have the ping bells I had this one and I found everybody turned around the ping bell a lot of people didn't notice this is just a cheap one um, you can get off eBay, but something to consider. Back down to the wheels, I had, uh, you can see the V-brake. You can see it's actually mounted at the back, not at the front. At the back, it was, it's a lot better actually, because the wheel is going in, in the forward direction. When you slam on the brakes, you know, the brakes are pushing back into their hold, not pulling away from it. So that's a very good, clever thing that Thorne have done there. Um, obviously with these, uh, ceramic rims. I had these blue pads you can see there, the blue Swiss pads and I on the back wheel the pads lasted for 8,000 miles and on the front they lasted the entire trip. I have now replaced them with brand new ones but they lasted the entire way. 16,000 miles I lasted with one set of brake pads which is absolutely phenomenal. It's changing brake pads is really simple on these bikes. It's just a, a pin that you pull out and replace the pads. I mean, if you're going to get these rims, you don't have to get these these blue pads. It's not a necessity. Um, it's one less thing to worry about, but it is a bit extra. If you can afford it, I would definitely recommend it. But if you're just going to go for the standard rim with the black pads, it's so easy to change. Just bring a few spares. It weighs nothing. But yeah, it's a nice extra to have, but not necessary. Um, going up, you can see obviously the front fork, it's this double fork. It only comes, I think it only comes with the Thorn Nomad, the Raven and the other models. It doesn't have this type of fork. This is obviously reinforced. Obviously I never had any cracks, nothing nothing went wrong with this fork. It's, it felt absolutely bomb-proof going down huge mountains off-road, so no problems at all. Um, this is the headset, the FSA, full speed ahead. This is the, it comes standard, it's the Orbit XL2. You'll find this have them on most of their bikes. Again, no problems. And then this bike I have here, I'm six foot two, so I'm a pretty tall guy. And this frame size, you can see it looks the bike looks strange, it doesn't look like a normal bike. This is their biggest frame, the 620L. But it's perfect for me because I could have nice high bars and it would be a real relaxing, comfortable position. My, my back was quite straight. Um, so yeah, that's the biggest frame they did. You can see there's a huge, there's a, a ton of spaces here to bring up the handlebars. Obviously the fork and the handlebar width were custom made. The rest of it's pretty standard, they just measure you up and say what position you did. So the actual thing that was custom made for my size and shape were the fork and the handlebar width. Um, so right back up to here. You can see I've got the, this is the roll off. I'll get back to that in a bit. My grips, these are the Ergon GP5 grips with the side. These were fantastic. I had drop bars before and I was considering getting drop bars for this bike, but I thought I'd give these a go and they are fantastic. This bit here really lets you squash out your whole wrist, you can see there. Instead of it being around a small bit and there being lots of pressure on one tiny bit of your palm, your whole palm spreads out and you know I didn't get numb hands at all. Um, these were great too for, I usually used the side grips up here for when I was going uphill so I could get more leverage and pull on the bike a bit. Um, again, the, the brakes are the Shimano Dior XT. Again, nothing went wrong. I think I changed the back cable once. That was it, the whole trip. 
option as you know the V-brakes are extremely easy to maintain. That's what I would say the biggest thing on this trip is if you're not really into bicycle mechanics just either go on YouTube or go to a course so you know how to adjust brakes, um, replace your chain, that kind of thing. Just a couple of adjustments now and again because I never needed, I never ever went to a bicycle shop for them to repair or add something onto the bike. I was able to do everything myself. It's so simple. This is almost a maintenance free bike but it's nice to know a few things just to get yourself out of trouble. So moving on a bit. Uh, the pedals, these aren't the original pedals I had. I had ones with clips on. These are just plastic pedals I've put from my other bike, uh, so I can't really comment on that. Um, obviously this is the crank arm, that's fine. This is the front sprocket, and you can see here is a Hebe chain glider. Um, obviously inside here is the chain, if I can get to it. You can see the chain is in there, just there. This is a, a rubber mount, it just clips on, just snaps on basically, it's very, very easy process. It costs about £15 extra but it was pretty much the best buy of the entire bike. I would highly recommend anybody who gets this bike to buy this extra because it encloses the chain. Yes there's a couple of gaps you can see in here, it's not perfectly, it's not airtight as such, um, but it keeps the majority of water, and dirt, dust, anything from the chain. So I mean I still took it off once a week and cleaned the chain and re-oiled it but they say to every 5,000 kilometers to flip around the sprockets at the front and the back and I never did that the entire way so I did 26,000 kilometers on the original front and back sprocket and I never flipped them around. You need special tools anyway to flip them around but you, if you maintain it properly you'll never need to do it. It was almost it was it hardly wore down at all which was amazing so if you look after the bike it really does look after you um the bottle cages i went through quite a few bottle cages along the trip obviously i was having different sized bottles and slight you know forcing them in and they always cracked and stuff but you know the the housing and stuff always went fine there's some underneath as well so you can get three bottle cages in sometimes people like to put their fuel underneath so that's fine um one thing i i was a little bit annoyed at you know sometimes um, the cabling for brakes and things like that they run on the side of the frame this one goes underneath so you can't attach anything underneath here like a u-lock a or another bottle cage or something like that it was very quite frustrating you can't put anything flush to the frame um, it's not really a design flaw but it would have been nice if they had put it on the side of something so I could have attached something straight underneath um, I could and it wasn't really I could have put something on the top I guess but it just didn't seem great and also when sometimes when do I want to attach frame bags it's it's not perfect but again it's you know that's the way they've manufactured it so only a minor gripe there this is the saddle post again no problem I think it's there the aluminium one never cracked under all the pressure I'm not a light guy I'm, a, I'm about 80 kilos and no nope, it was great so that's that right as you'll know let's go around the side this here is uh, an eccentric bottom bracket here. So basically, these there's two pins here and two pins underneath. You see that? Yep, two pins underneath. So what you do to tighten the chain, you loosen these two here. These two pins go into this eccentric, basically just push into it and stop it from moving around. So you loosen those, so then this whole bottom bracket is loose and you put a two pin prong in there which Thorn provide for you so make sure you keep it safe and you just orbit this around and that will shift the whole crank arm just slightly to the left and that will tighten your chain it's that simple it you know your chain will be very loose loosen loosen swing around a little bit tighten it and you're done it's brilliant you know some people have the older models where they have chain tensioners and all that kind of stuff at the back but this is it's fantastic it's just brilliant and it's easy so if you want to take up the whole bottom bracket you just undo those slide the whole thing out clean it re-grease job done it's brilliant i love it so along here this is the mechanism for the roll-off so this is what changes the gears it's simply this this just a hand tightened nut 
and this comes off. And so all this does, when you rotate on the handlebars, it rotates this hex kind of hexagonal thing here, which rotates this thing here, and that changes all the gears. And that just slides on. It's also a good safety device, <laughs> along with a lot of other things. But if you lock up your bike, you can have a, a normal lock, like a cable lock or a U-lock. You can always... Um, I've got this little attachment here which is like a, a bit of cord and you can attach that to the front brake and lock the front wheel. You can always put it to gear number 14, the hardest gear, so if somebody steals your bike, um, pedalling away is very tricky. But the best thing to do I find is you either put it in the high, hardest gear or in the easiest gear and if you put it in the easiest gear they can't get away very fast. But if you take this off whilst you're parked away, nobody really knows what this is, apart from people who use a roll-off. And if that's not attached then they can't change gear um, if they're trying to take away your bike quickly. So yeah, that just pops back on there. Okay, uh, I also had locking skewers. I've got my quick release ones on now, but I had locking skewers as well. To be honest, to take off this wheel takes a very long time. You don't need locking skewers. Um, but if you want an extra uh, bit of security, that's a good thing to go for. They don't cost very much, but um, if you get a puncture, taking off the wheel takes quite a long time because you have to remove this box, you have to remove the locking skewer, which takes longer, then you have to take off the Hebe chain glider, and then uh, take it all off. So that takes, you know, it takes a good few minutes to take off this back wheel. Plus you have to, well, the tyres deflated, but you have to deflate the tyre, unlock the brakes, everything, so even without locking skewers this back wheel is very secure, but you know, it costs a lot of money, the roll-off costs a good thousand pounds this whole wheel, so it's very expensive, but it's worth it. Um, the roll-off is 14 gears inside this hub, as most of you will already know. This is the, um, the little hole here, it's the little screw, 3mm screw. That comes with it, you can change the oil every three, I think it's, what do they say, every 3,000 kilometers, 5,000 kilometers. I only changed it twice in the 26,000 kilometers. They, I should have done it a bit more, but I didn't have the oil with me on the road. But it held it fine, I had zero problems with my roll-off. It was absolutely brilliant, and the first gear was good enough to go up fully loaded up 25% hills. Um, very slowly obviously, but it, it handled every single bit of terrain and I went to Central Asia in the Pamir Highway in the mountains up there, so you can get up huge, huge climbs for days on end with this. And then um, top speed on the flat with the tailwind, I could usually cycle about 23 to 25 miles per hour flat out before I was spinning too much, so it's not a f you can't go super fast with a roll-off, but um, if you're touring you're not supposed to really be going that fast, so it's more than adequate for 99% of tourers. Obviously the most of my weight was on the back. Um, I had my both panniers and a Ortlieb rack pack, plus I had lots of food and water, sometimes the, uh, on the entire bike. I think the heaviest I had it was in Australia and it was 75 kilos in total. The bike this bike weighs 20 kilos, so I had 55 kilograms of luggage, including water, and it held up perfectly. Again, the rack was brilliant. Um, I only needed to tighten the screws once every two weeks, and it didn't need that much adjustment. You'll notice here, there is a bend. This happened on my way home from London back to England. This happened during transport over the airplane, not on tour. Um, and to put, to bend the rack, must have taken some considerable force. Whatever they've loaded on top of this, I don't know, but um, that's an extreme amount of weight. I could easily carry a person on the back of this rack and nothing happened, so I don't know what's happened here, but it still, it still feels absolutely rock solid, this rack. I thought it looked a bit basic when I first saw it, but when you feel it in person, it's unbelievably strong. Uh, the plastic rain racks, the SKS mudguards, they're brilliant. 
There was also a light attached here. Thorn gave me a light that I screwed in here, which was brilliant. Um, I don't know what else really there is to say about this bike. I think I've covered most of the points. Um, the inner tubes were just normal Schwab ones. Yeah, I'd highly recommend when you, if you go on a, a really long tour, which I'd assume you were doing if you bought this bike, everybody had Schwab tyres, not Continental. I mean, the Dream were good, but not perfectly suitable for off-road touring in Central Asia. I would recommend getting the Mondial or Marathon Plus or Marathon Plus Tour. Marathon Plus Tour, I would say, were the ultimate ones. Um, this bike in total costs £3,008, so very expensive for a bicycle, but it's worth it and I'll have it forever. It's going to last me a very long time. And that's pretty much everything I can think of. Um, I'll be using this for tours in the future. Um, I never expect to get another bicycle again. This is pretty much it for life now. It's the Thorn Nomad Mark II from Bridgewater in England and I highly recommend it to anybody. If you have any questions please uh, uh, write a comment below or send me an email or something like that. I'd be more than happy to answer. And you can always check out my blog which is richardbike.com. Cheers, thank you, bye.